So you have an idea for an electronics project and you want to build it, but you want to build it really fast. If speed is your priority, then using the Arduino is going to be your best bet. Arduino is an entire ecosystem for quickly prototyping electronics things that require some kind of coding. Let's say you've got some sensor hardware, like a temperature sensor, or distance sensor, or something like that. And then you have some output hardware, maybe LEDs, motors, or an OLED display. The Arduino is the brain that sits in the middle. You write code that gets uploaded to this Arduino board. And then the code you write is the logic that does the interesting stuff, like reading the temperature, and if it's at a certain threshold, turn on a fan, or whatever. You can make your logic super simple, or it could be really advanced stuff. Now, what makes Arduino ideal for fast prototyping is that there's this huge ecosystem of hardware and software. That means if you need to use a specific sensor, you can probably find one that works well with Arduino, and there's probably already code written for it to get you up and running with it fast. Now, let me give you an idea of how insanely fast you can build stuff. To promote Team Water, I decided to prototype a water quality monitoring system. I got most of the idea from the University of Georgia. They had a really cool, low-cost water quality measurement system. And I thought, hey, these look like great components. So it has four sensors in total. There's a total dissolved solid sensor, a turbidity sensor, a pH sensor, and a temperature sensor. So four different sensors that I want to integrate into a single project and get some kind of cohesive data from. Now, mind you, this is going to be a prototype, so it's going to look messy, but that's okay because speed is my goal. So step one, I need to get the hardware. So first, I'm going to decide what kind of Arduino board I want to use. Now, which specific Arduino board you choose is kind of a different lesson. You can check out the description for where I talk about that a little bit. But for this project, I decided to go with an Arduino Uno R3 because they happen to be my go-to unless I need Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So once you've decided on what Arduino board you're going to use, then you need to buy the other hardware, like the sensors and the output devices that your project is going to have. Now, usually when you're buying this stuff, companies will mention that the hardware is Arduino compatible. So that's kind of what you're looking for when you're buying these things. Now, I like to buy hardware from vendors that provide example code and a wiring diagram. So what that means is they're going to give you some stuff to get you started out. So you're not trying to guess what code you need to make the sensor work or how you're supposed to wire it up and scrounge all that stuff from a bunch of different places. It's provided from that vendor. So when you're buying some hardware, see if the company also has a wiki page or some kind of documentation to get you started. The other thing you'll want to check for when you're buying the hardware is make sure it's compatible with your Arduino board that you picked. Now there's two big general divisions, all right? There's a lot more than that, but there's the five volt category of Arduino boards, and then there's the 3.3 volt. Again, kind of oversimplifying it here, but I think this works for a large majority of boards. So let's say you're using an Arduino Uno R3. It has an operating voltage of five volts. This means that it's gonna communicate at a certain voltage level. Now, if I were using an ESP32 development board, it operates at a 3.3 volt. So when you're buying this additional hardware, you know, like the sensor and the output stuff, you need to make sure that it's gonna work with the voltage level that your Arduino board's operating at. Now, some sensors can work with both the 3.3 volt and five volt, which is pretty handy. Now, most companies that sell this stuff know that this is a question you're gonna be asking of the component, and so you should be able to find it pretty easily on their component page. Now, once you've got the hardware that you need, now it's time to start writing some code. Now, this is a good place to mention that you need to have the Arduino IDE installed on your computer to write Arduino code. Now, the Arduino IDE, or Integrated Development Environment, that's the software tool where you're going to write the code for your project. It's kind of like a text editor, but for code. What's great is that once you write the code, the Arduino IDE makes it simple to upload that code to your physical Arduino board. Plus, the Arduino IDE is free. It's open source. You can check out the description for an in-depth lesson on how to use the IDE. Okay. So now you've got your hardware, you've got the Arduino IDE installed. The first thing you want to do is run a smoke test of each piece of your hardware individually. What's a smoke test, you ask? Well, basically what you want to do is test that you can communicate to whatever piece of hardware you've got hooked up to your Arduino board. So the way I run a smoke test is by pasting in some of the example code that came with the sensor or actuator or whatever, and I upload it to the board. Usually the example code is going to print something out to the serial 
serial monitor window, or it might make the actuator do something so that you can verify that things are working. Now, if you have no idea what the serial monitor is, then make sure to check the description. We've got a video that talks about that as well. So what I generally do is run a smoke test for every single piece of hardware that I will be integrating with my Arduino. So I wire up the circuit following the wiring diagram. I upload that example code, and then I check that it's giving me the appropriate outputs. Like if it's a temp sensor for me, a smoke test would be that it reports back the temperature. If it's an OLED display, a smoke test would be verifying that it displays the the text to the OLED screen, you know, that I tell it to show. Now there's a couple gotchas that can hit you during these tests. First, you need to make sure that you've got the correct Arduino board selected in the Arduino IDE. If you're using an Arduino Uno R3, but you've got some other board selected, then you're probably going to get an error. Also, if you've got some super generic Arduino board, you may have to try a couple different board selections to make sure you've got one that actually works. Another common thing that happens is that when you're loading the example code, it might require an additional library get installed. Now, a library is just a bunch of code that's been written and organized in a specific way for some type of purpose. For example, there may be a code library written specifically for the sensor that you bought. Luckily, installing these libraries is simple. You just go to the bookshelf icon in the Arduino IDE, you search for the library name, verify it's the right one, and then you click install. That's literally it. Now, sometimes you can have upload issues. So that's when you've written the code and you want to get the code uploaded to your Arduino board. Now, these can range in frustration from darn, I dropped a spoon to I think I'm going to burn my house down now. Check the description below for a video we made that kind of goes over a lot of the reasons why you might have issues uploading code to your board. So once you have smoke tested all of your sensor and output devices, now you have to integrate all that functionality into a single program. And what I do is lean heavily into the example code provided by the vendor, you know, whoever made these sensors. And what I do is I take as much as I can from their example code to get me started. Now, this is where it can get a little tricky if you're not careful. The big thing you need to understand is how basically an Arduino program works. There's two big sections. You've got a setup and you have a loop. The setup function only runs once every time you power the Arduino board on. So you only put code in that section that is stuff that might initialize other things, stuff that's only going to run once. The loop section, however, runs over and over. It starts with code at the top and then it works down line by line until it gets to the bottom of the loop section and then it starts at the top again. It's kind of like the circle of life, but just really fast. So if you want your sensor to be read frequently over and over, then the code that controls that needs to be in the loop section. So how do you know if code needs to be in the loop or setup? Well, this is where you can go back to the example code again. If they have code in the setup, well, you should probably put it in the setup in your program. If they have it in the loop, you'll probably want it in the loop as well. Now, okay, there's no question that I am hugely oversimplifying the writing of this code. It could be great if you could just cut and paste code and have everything work like a charm, but it just generally doesn't work like that. I mean, this is reality after all. Now, if you don't actually want to learn how to code and you'd rather just have a solution, definitely give some of these AI tools a go at writing a program for you. Now, I like to use Claude, but if I'm being completely honest with you in my, my own experience, I find that once you get past even basic programs, and start using sensors that might not have a lot of example code out there, then the models just struggle with the results that I'm happy with. Of course, your mileage may vary. But for those of you who actually want to learn how to code something, I want to give you a couple programming tips that I live by that I hope will help you writing your Arduino programs. Okay, so the tip one, think about your program before you write it. Imagine that you wanted to build a deck on your house. Well, you'd probably grab a piece of paper and you know sketch out the design and decide kind of how you were going to build the thing. Well, that process of sketching it out, that's going to help you realize things ahead of time that you might not you know have thought of. Well, for code, it's the same thing. If you put a little thought ahead of time into your program, sketch things out, then it will help you write it. Now, for a simple program, all I do is I just write kind of a step-by-step -step what I want the program to do at the top of the sketch in comments. This way, I know the code I have to write to achieve my desired result. 
Now, if it's a more complicated program, then what I'll do is I'll start drawing state diagrams, making tables, I'll even pseudocode some of the key algorithms before I ever write a single line of code. So that's the first tip. Spend a little time thinking about your program before you jump into the code. So here's my second tip. And this one's probably just as important as the first one. When you start writing your program, and in Arduino speak, a program is called a sketch. When you start writing your code, make sure you verify your code frequently. As in, every time you write a line of code or finish a line of code, go ahead and verify it. The verify button is the check mark in the top left and it's free to press. Doesn't cost anything to click that button. And when you press the button, what happens is the compiler will check your program for errors. And the more frequently you press it, the more quickly you'll find errors and then be able to fix them. Now the compiler is only going to be able to find certain kinds of errors and they're actually the easier errors to find but it's still good to find them earlier than later the more difficult errors are the errors that we code in just logical errors you know we haven't designed a program appropriately the compiler's not going to catch those regardless the quicker you find your errors the better because if you write a bunch of code and then you only press the verify button at the end, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get a kajillion errors and you're gonna have no idea where to start fixing them. So here's my final tip, a little bit of advice, drink water. Yes, that's right, staying hydrated is gonna keep your brain in tip-top shape so that you can think through any coding challenges as you run into it along the way. But what if you don't have access to potable water? Like, I can't hardly imagine not being able to go into my kitchen and get clean drinking water from my tap. But there are people all over the world living in places where that water infrastructure simply does not exist. And that's why I'm joining Team Water with this video so that we can help raise $40 million this August to help people around the world gain access to drinking water for decades. You can check out teamwater.org right now to donate. One dollar gives one person clean water for a year. That seems pretty effective. Okay, so look at this. Four different sensors, all integrated into a single program and checking my water quality. I did this in less than an hour. That is the magic of the Arduino ecosystem. The only way I was able to make this happen was because I leaned heavily into example code that was written by other people for this Arduino ecosystem. Plus, I had all the sensors I wanted to buy based on a project that was done by a research group at the Georgia Southern University where they were studying how to build low cost water quality monitoring systems. Now, if you wanna dive into programming your own electronics projects, make sure to check out our Arduino crash course in the description below, and also check out programmingelectronics.com. This video right here is probably the next video you should watch as well. It's going to fill in some of the stuff we were talking about. This one right here.